Hello and welcome to Badminton Unlimited. Coming up on the show, Singapore's star shuttler Yo Jiamin shares why badminton is her sport of choice. Yeah, I would say that I loved the sport since I was young. Our top five plays from the recently concluded Danisa Denmark Open 2020. Plus, Jano Jorgensen talks about his decision to retire. Yo Jiamin's rise to the pinnacle of the world junior rankings in 2017 drew eager attention to her undeniable talent, not just in Singapore, but also on the world stage. At the 2019 World Championships, the 21-year-old produced a Herculean effort to reach the quarterfinals. With three BWF titles under her belt, this badminton enthusiast has transformed into a world beater. I first started um, playing badminton with my parents when I was about seven years old. They didn't want to play with me that much, so I ended up training under the coach, like just beside uh, their court. I think I would say that when I think back when I was young, I was like quite crazy because like, I can end up playing about 10 hours on Saturdays, like from morning all the way to after dinner. Yeah, I would say that I loved the sport since I was young. When I was 12 years old, I went to a normal secondary school in Singapore. It was um, pretty tough for me because I had to leave school earlier to go for afternoon practice and then night practice and then I would have lots of homework and projects to do until late at night, like past midnight and then I would be waking up early for school again. So I tried it out for about six months or so when I, I decided that maybe I would choose to go to sports school instead where I would be able to have my education more um, supported by the school and I'll be able to train more um, regularly and i have more time to rest in between. So that was when I made the change to sports school. I actually didn't know that I was world number one because I don't check the rankings. I was told by my parents actually and actually I think they were more excited and happy than me. I was still focusing more on like my competitions and stuff so I didn't really pay a lot of attention to it. The Vietnam Open 2016 was a memorable one because it was my first win in a BWF circuit. And it was also a competition where I played with um, no pressure and I just like wanted to enjoy every match. So I think that was one of the main reasons why I was able to yeah, got a result, good result. I won the Vietnam Open again in 2018. I remember that there was um, a lot of um, people cheering for me um, throughout the tournament and like, it made me feel more mo motivated to win again. 2019, I managed to go to the finals in the Hyderabad Open and I played against uh, Korea's An Seyong in the finals. Going to the match, like, I was just focused on what I had to do and uh, it was a long match but I think we both played quite well so I think what made me uh, win that match was that I was able to be consistent um, in the game to not make uh, my own mistakes and was more um, proactive. I've been playing badminton for many years now since I was young but uh, I think that I still have not achieved what I want to a lot of things that I can improve on and work on and bring um, the best out of me so I won't have like regrets next time and hopefully in the next few years I'll be able to have better results
Yoja Min orchestrated the biggest upset at the Total BWF World Championships 2019, ousting world number one Akane Yamaguchi in the second round. Although Ye's stirring run ended at the hands of Thailand's Ratchanok Intanon in the quarterfinals, the 20-year-old made history by becoming the first Singaporean to advance to the last eight of a world championship. Yo spent some time with Badminton Unlimited, recounting her record-making story and meteoric rise to fame. Going to the World Championships, I knew that I was going to face uh, Akane uh, in the earlier rounds. But I just told myself that I was going to focus on what I can do. So when I went on court, like, I didn't think of anything else. But what a good start here by the youngster from Singapore. Really playing fast. I was able to keep my unforced errors quite low and I was able to maintain my speed and I was moving quite fast throughout the whole game. So I think that was what made me have more opportunities to control the game. She's up the pace, says Young Gucci in that rally. Pace of movement. Oh, that's just delightful. Oh, my goodness. Oh, she has been superb at the net. That is a super shot again. <laughs> Down the line. It's match point opportunities. It's gone wide. What a victory for the 20 year old from Singapore. On match point, when I won the last point, I was like just um, very happy and relieved to have like finished the match well. So I reached the quarterfinals at my first World Championships, and I knew that Rajanok was the senior in the circuit and more experienced um, playing so many years. I had to uh, make sure that I was able to be consistent in the whole match in order to fight um, well with her. Oh, good defence. And again, get up! Get up. <laughs> That's easier said than done. <laughs> what great play though from... But the Yo last Min. shot from Yo Min is actually very, very tight. I say in that match, uh, Rajanak was able to control much better than me. She was attacking a uh, player, so it was difficult for me to defend. And I think that was the main reason why I was not able to win that match. Oh, yes. Converts the first time of asking. So after I reached the quarterfinals, uh, I actually didn't know that I was the first person in Singapore to do so. So when I came back, there was like many uh, interviews, um, newspapers, online. I was just like pleasantly surprised and also like just thankful for the support. 
the World Championship has given me more motivation to continue to work hard and to continue to work on my weaknesses and my game. I believe that I, if I don't give up, then um, I will be able to achieve more in the years to come. Time for a short break, but we'll be back with the action from the Danisa Denmark Open 2020 and our top five plays. And we'll hear from Jano Jorgensen, who called time on his incredible international career in Odense. And also felt like every morning when I had when I wake when I woke up and, and you know the desire to do all these extra things and and all this was, was slightly dropping. What a week it was in Odense. The Danisa Denmark Open 2020 not only welcomed competitive badminton's safe return, but also delivered some unforgettable action on the court. Whether it's well-worked rallies, pinpoint smashes or deft flicks, we've got it all in our top five plays from the Super 750 tournament. So far, yeah. well played, well constructed by the two German players. And for first time, I think uh, Isabel sort of got into the rally. herself a smile. Well worked by the Danes. Oh, that's a beauty. That's that. the shot of the match so far. That's well played. And that's pinpoint accuracy. Spreaded it down the line. Brilliant. Fabulous rally. The defence of Genka weathering the storm. I was kind of afraid that I couldn't feel like the adrenaline and all the desire to win because I already said that I was done and I really am done. This tournament doesn't make me second guess or anything. It's just made me feel that this is it's the right the decision I have made. Um, this is definitely the last international I'll be playing in. And it feels good to stand here and say that with uh, with peace in my heart. So yeah, that's nice. And Jorgensen, I can tell you, the fans all around me are on their feet. A standing ovation for Jan or Jorgensen. The emotion getting to the 32-year-old. What a career he's had. At the Danisa Denmark Open 2020, 
former world number two and Danish badminton icon Jana Jorgensen called time on his career. After 12 years with the Danish national team, an emotional Jorgensen bowed out following his quarter-final loss to compatriot Anders Antonsen. Yeah, way too emotional. <laughs> I tried my very best not to, you know, get in that stage, but um, I could feel already when I uh, got called up and walked on the into the stadium. I could feel that okay, this is going to be like a tough one, not uh, you know going into that stage and. Um, it was a struggle uh, right from the beginning, but then, then we started playing and I tried to find a way and, and I think I came up with something in the beginning of both sets, but, but Anna's like was just like like a pillow and you know he was just like putting it back to me and then, then I rushed things in the end because he's obviously a world-class player and to be honest I I knew that my chances today were very, very slim. The 32-year-old originally announced his departure from the game in June via Instagram, saying his last day of training at the National Centre would be the 24th of June. It was a decision a long time in the making, Jorgensen revealed. I was a long decision. I had these thoughts when I had the heel injury in 2017, and then, then I got back and then I pushed it away because I had quite a good comeback, reaching top 20 and everything. Then I started to feel like a couldn't, you know, I was all right with competing like once in a while, you know, reaching semi-finals that stuff, but it was having less and less. And also felt like every morning when I had, when I wake, when I woke up and, and you know, the desire to do all these extra things and and all this was, was slightly dropping. And, and when you get these vibes, you gotta hit the brake. So I, I did that and I think it was a great time. Uh, Thomas Cobb was my big dream to be part of this team with all my friends and from the team and um, and yeah obviously cancelled and tough decision to, ca to to stay away from that when I actually had a chance to play it in here in October but um, with my wife moving to us moving to Germany and everything it um, it felt like the right decision. Jorgensen's decision to retire at the Denmark Open was an obvious one, with it being his home tournament and also where he began his international career. Huge memories here. Uh, first one, 2005, reaching second round in Aarhus, I think. Uh, very, very young. A few years later, semi-finals, beating Peter Gade here and, and, and winning next year. Uh, my first major title, so so yeah, this is this is one of the the big places for me, and uh, and I'm I'm just proud to have won it, and uh, and to end it here is uh, is perfect. I'm happy to have chosen myself which day, and of course I couldn't choose to, to be playing a quarterfinal, but I could be uh, choose to play this tournament. I've done that, and I went all in, and I think I did had some good wins against upcoming European players, uh, so. Um, Happy to happy to do that, but uh, but this this tonight was uh, was a big gift. Also, with the limited crowd, uh, they were pretty uh, pretty amazing and uh, yeah, pretty overwhelming. Jorgensen's career has been truly remarkable. He was the first European to win the men's singles title both at the Indonesia Open and the China Open. He held the world number two spot for a total of 63 weeks, a victorious legacy he is proud of. You know, I, I, I've always, you know, done all I could, you know, for winning. And, and I have tried to, you know, work up the spirit inside me when I didn't play well. Sometimes it has made me win games where I wouldn't have had any chance and big comebacks and also cost me big titles and wins against, especially against the likes of Lee Chong Wei and then Chen Long, where I had like, I, I, I feel like I've been there as strong as them but uh, of, of course like stats wise I'm way behind these guys and I've lost to them so many times so I think my desire has been like a good thing sometimes but it also been something who has you know which has blocked me so um, it has been a passenger all, all my career and, uh, and um, yeah. Badminton Unlimited would like to wish Jana Jorgensen a very happy retirement and success to him and his family for the future. Take care champ.
Jano Jorgensen took European badminton to new heights with his incredible achievements on tour. In 2014, he became the first European singles player to win the Indonesia Open title. Then in 2016, he achieved the same feat at the China Open, defending Chinlong in the final. We look back at that epic win, which incidentally was also his last tour title. Oh, that's brilliant. That's brilliant. Seven, eight. Excellent game plan, of course, this should have been a winner for Chin Long. Ooh, yeah, well played. Very good. Oh, that's quick. Five, three. And that. Oh, rally. Oh, and it's landed in. That's remarkable. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, that's all right. Can Jano Jorgensen being cool, calm, and collected? Yeah. Seven, 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 ten. ten. Oh, that's sweet. It's a very important rally. Yeah. Oh, I don't oh. believe it. The net courts from Chen Long. Well, that's short. Oh, my goodness. Well, he's playing one of the best matches I've seen Jano Jorgensen play so far. He's done it. He has done it. He has won the China Open. 
Jan or Jorgensen has beaten the reigning world and Olympic champion Chen Long. And Jan or Jorgensen becomes the first European player to take a singles title, men or women's singles title, at the China Open. No Europeans have achieved what this man has achieved today. Jan or Jorgensen. Next week on Badminton Unlimited, following some disappointing losses, Dechapal Prova Ranokro and Sapsuri Teratanachai finally joined the winner's circle with three victories and are now bent on becoming the best. In the meantime, remember to log on to bwfbadminton.com for the latest news and features on the sport. Stay safe, everyone.